Let's stay in the luxury goods space. We're joined by Andy Payne, CEO at Wilderness Safaris. He's going to take a look at the world of luxury accommodation uh, with a focus on ecotourism and, of course, uh, very much appealing to the affluent market and very much the international market is what Wilderness caters for. I mean, you were saying that 95% of your customer base are international. Yeah, this is true. I, it's not to say that the local market can't afford our product at all. It's just um, I think the local market prefers to use their discretionary income to possibly travel overseas and to do things that they can do which internationals can't do. Um, you know, wildlife and, and our experience-based tourism offering is on their doorstep and I think South Africans have had a, a huge amount of time to experience it and they're looking for alternatives. So I don't really think it's about price, it's about choice really. And, from a South African point of view. So, of course, you know, many wealthy individuals here are so used to the bush that perhaps using their money to go on a skiing trip or whatever it may be overseas. Uh, let, let's talk about kind of the attitude of the wealthy and those who are affluent towards, uh, towards luxury accommodation, luxury safaris. Has that changed uh, from the kind of pre-financial crisis to where we are now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we, as I said earlier, we're in the experience-based tourism market and I think it's very different to, to the product-based tourism market and to just luxury goods, which I think, you know, is behaving differently. But it's quite interesting. I think pre-recession, um, we saw a big drop in the top end of the market, which surprised us. You know, we thought that the top end would be more resilient, but that dropped off. And I think we interpreted it at the time that... Um, there were a lot of symbolic reasons why people didn't want to spend, you know, they felt that, you know, if their staff couldn't afford it or, or other people couldn't afford it, they shouldn't lead, a, lead in that way. So we, we felt that that had an impact. We also think that a lot of people were geared quite heavily to get into that bracket and they were literally cut off at the knees. So they didn't really drop down, they actually dropped out of the cycle. But it's definitely come back. I mean, all the stats indicate that uh, the, the appetite to, to spend in luxury is, is, is increasing year on year. Mm -hmm. you know, after the first year of the recession. Um, but I do think it's changed. You know, the way people are spending today, you know, I read a great article about whether you want it or whether you need it. I think luxury spend is more in the need category at the moment. So people might think that they're incredibly stressed and they've got big jobs and they need to go out and travel and that's a part of a, an important component to their life. And I think that's where luxury is starting to fit in um, more dynamically at the moment. So there we go, high expectations when they arrive. Very stressed okay. out from, from a year, perhaps during this Christmas break, and they want the best, mm -hmm. uh, and they're paying top notch for it. So how do you ensure that? Talk to us about the, the staff element um, at your camps. Yeah, look, uh, you know, in our business, you know, the staff, you know, in reality is the link between our business and, and the guest. It's the link between the environment and the guest, you know. Um, and all the messaging that happens on the ground happens through our staff. I mean, we do some messaging on the walls, but essentially it happens, you know, through the staff. So staff are critical. You know, I think the beautiful thing about our business, um, and we trade in the informal sector, is that we do a lot of in-house training. We train up literally from the ground. We take people out of the communities. And, you know, I always say the proudest moment in our business is that we can train people up in three, four months to host the most important people in the world. And I think today, you know, going back to what you were saying earlier and the relevance of the offering is critical. I think, you know, people want to understand, they, they want to get the local element. There's more emphasis on culture. There's more mm. emphasis on understanding community dynamics. And all of that comes out through the staff, you know, and it's, it's easier to do it when you've got the real person doing it. And um, What's your typical staff to guest ratio? Oh, uh, it varies from destination to destination, but yeah. between two and six. Our okay. top end is at probably at six and our bottom end is round two, yeah. So top end, you've got six staff running around you, making sure that you're having the best holiday possible. Uh, you know, and the, the food and wine aspect of it is very important, also part of the whole experience when you go to a lodge. How do you, you know, make sure that you offer best quality food in a very remote road destination and have kind of a wine connoisseur is able to communicate the wines to the guests? Yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing and a very interesting discussion. I think what we try and do in our business is we try and give a relevant food and, and wine experience. We don't want to compete with the best restaurant in Europe or for that matter in South Africa. It's just that we wouldn't be able to do it. We don't have local produce. You know, we've got a lot of lead time to get the produce into the camps. And, you know, we also find it difficult to, to host and to keep the top end chefs in our business, you know, because we're so remote. So we look to more to a relevant offering, you know, and uh, I think I always say we measured on our weakest link. Um, food is only part of the experience. There's a lot of other things that comprise the complete experience. And we have to get it all. And it's all measured in one package. You know? and, um, and if you get that right, it's, uh, 
It's a little bit of a double-bladed knife. It's oh no, wow, and if you get it wrong, it's very wrong. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of attention to make sure that we align the experience to to the expectation. And when it comes to kind of all the decor and all that aspect of it, do you place a lot, do guests place a lot of emphasis on mm -hmm. having uh, you know quality bed linen or whatever it may be in, in their rooms? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, there's. You cannot excuse yourself, you know, even if you've got the best stage in the world in, in the Okavango Delta or the Sabi Sands, that's not an excuse. There's got to be a baseline, you know, um, after which you spoil. So that baseline expectation needs to be met. I mean, but how are you dealing with this at a, at a time like this where you've talked about, you know, heavy price competition in, a, in, a, in the luxury goods space, that would mean margins coming under pressure, yet you're, you know, you're under pressure to continue to make sure that you're keeping up uh, with the, you know, the best quality decor and best quality demands, uh, best quality that is out there. Well, you know, it is a little bit of a balance, but I think we're a strategic business. So a lot about the investment and service today is about future revenue. And I don't, you know, I always say that if you, if we return one happy guest, it's the best marketing spend that we can do in our organization. So if we just get that done um, and we spoil and delight and we, you know, and we, we really, really exceed in that aspect of our business, I'm confident that in the future it's going to give us another five or ten extra bed nights. We're a referral-based business. And that's where the return comes, and that's the cycle that we, we invest in. Um, and, and your view, very quickly, on, on the kind of outlook for the luxury travel space, uh, luxury accommodation space next year and more longer term? Yeah, I, I, I'm extremely positive. I mean, I, 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 you know, I think the, the excessive liquidity in the US market has helped us. We've seen growth. The numbers behind us are showing 10 to 15% growth in, in strong markets. So we, we, you know, we're confident it's going to grow. You yeah. know, it's... It's going to remain tough, but we, we're excited about potential growth. We well, thank are. you for coming in on this uh, Friday afternoon. Andy Payne, CEO at Wilderness Safaris, joining me here.